Hi everyone, my name is James Haskell and welcome to What a Flanker. Today's guest is actually a bit of a hero of mine. Uh, he's someone with 250 million downloads on his podcast. Uh, I thought I was doing right with, with 16 million, not, not on What a Flanker, it hasn't got anyone downloading it yet, <laughs> but on The Good, The Bad and Rugby, a television writer and director, um, Jamie Morton. Hey mate, how's it going? How are you? I should um, actually... Uh... Correct you. It's now two hundred and seventy-five million. But don't worry about it. It's oh, well, not important. Who's counting? I, probably you are. So um, uh, I, me and my dad, definitely. <laughs> right. Two hundred. Two hundred. Do you say two hundred seventy-five million? <laughs> yeah. Someone's getting Which fired. Which is a stupid, a stupid number. I mean, it is ridiculous. Once you get into the kind of hundreds of millions, I don't think they're real, they're real numbers. Do you know what I mean? It's like, well, what does that even mean? So, for people who've got no know. idea what we're talking about, you yes. are the mastermind and genius, along with um, uh, Alice Levine and James Cooper, mm -hmm. um, behind my dad wrote a porno. Indeed, the, the biggest podcast that has ever been <laughs> in the world ever. Uh, it it um, is, isn't it? Uh, I, I don't think we're the biggest ever. Um, I know Ricky Gervais called quite, himself quite the well. Podfather for quite a while. Did he? I, yeah, because he, he was called he was the Podfather. Well, he was like the first kind of wave, wasn't he? Yeah. We're in the second wave at the minute um, of podcasting. Yeah, I was about to say not coronavirus. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I did try to shake your hand earlier, and you were <laughs> yeah. like, absolutely not. Having ab with you? Are you kidding me? Mate, I don't I'm, know what you've been up to or where you've been. I'm more sanitised than any person <laughs> in the history of the world. <laughs> No, sure, sure. Yeah, I am sure, sure, believe you. So when you started off with with my dad wrote a porn, and the reason mm. I want you in here today is A, I absolutely fucking love you, love your show. Uh, and I love the, the whole game. But also uh, talking about storytelling. When you started My Dad Wrote, do you have any idea that it was going to go as big as it was? I mean, literally. No. It's interesting, actually. No, not at all. But when we started, podcasting really wasn't, particularly in this country, it wasn't really a no. thing. I mean, cereal had just just happened, I think, um, and no such thing as a fish had started. But that was pretty much it, because there was that kind of wave with Ricky Gervais and Helen Zaltzman and stuff in the early years, and Helen's still doing great shows now. Uh, but then it kind of petered off, didn't it? And then it kind of had this resurgence with cereal. Because so everyone think, has a podcast now, including e myself. Oh my God, honestly, you've got a million. I know, I've got more podcasts <laughs> than Apple Store at the moment. My, I've, got, I've got The Good, The Bad and The Rugby, Couples Quarantine, now What a Flanker. You've got your own category or subcategory <laughs> on iTunes um so yeah so we really didn't have any expectations of it and it was one of those things as well and I'm sure you can empathize with this what's funny with your mates down the pub isn't necessarily gonna be funny to anybody else so we were a little bit like do we just find this funny is it funny because James and Al know my dad do you need to know my dad to find it funny there are a lot of unknowns with it really so we we didn't have any expectation which has been it was a good thing because obviously we just made the show that we wanted to make, but it also didn't really prepare us at all for what kind of was about to happen. That was quite a good it. thing though, because you went into it blindly for a bit of fun, and then you were hit with this. Totally, yeah. I mean, we did. We like took it seriously. You know, we did plan it, and we. we I mean, we, we talked about a year before we actually started oh, recording really? it, just to kind of work out what the show was going to be and tone. Because and... I thought three of you just got pissed and started recording. <laughs> I'm glad that it sounds like that. That's great. It honestly, the, the first bit, it does sound like. I imagine that you, because you got you went to Leeds University with with, yeah. the, with the other yeah, two, yeah. so you're as thick as thieves as, as yeah. friends. Um, and you know, and Alice and James are, are amazing. Obviously, They're I brilliant. was very yeah. kind to, it's very lucky for me to to, to be invited onto your your podcast. I know you were an absolute hit. I couldn't believe it. You were you did you said a, a minute ago? I think when we weren't necessarily recording the the video that um, yeah. you were a little bit concerned about my, me coming on. I just was like, you know, you're a loose cannon, mate. You you, you know that a little bit. But I, I, I love was... how you've had to qualify that in case I didn't, <laughs> and in case I didn't, and I was going to go. What the fuck what are do you mean? About? You come on what a flank when you said I'm a loose cannon. <laughs> Nobody said I'm a loose cannon. Everyone in there is going. He is a loose cannon. No, I mean I I really liked the fact that you were coming on because it was just such a different voice as yeah. well. Because you know we had quite you know we had like Elijah you know, Wood, Elijah Wood, yeah. Emma Thompson, yeah. you know Michael Sheen, kind of. Yeah, legit quite, people. Well, no, but like yeah. actors and yeah, quite, yeah. you know high for it was. I was excited to have you on to just be a bit more, you know. Real, real, bit more Edgy. you, bit more, bit more street, bit more. Yeah, bit, sure. I'll tell you I mean, what, I tell you what the best term is: bit more grassroots. Exactly. Like a bit more there you go. Real, yeah. real yeah. lowbrow. But honestly, God, it was so popular that episode. I can't. I don't understand. I'm not even talking about myself. The amount of feedback and positivity I got over that that footnotes was like. You were so funny though, mate. You were hilarious. <laughs> It's a great app. I loved it. Because you know, every day I sort of sit by my phone thinking that because it did go well, that you might be like, and another member of the gang is, <laughs> we need someone back in for this, but it, it hasn't happened. So no, I, I we don't really double dip guests. Um, 
You would be absolutely one of the top people that people would want to have back. Those. Do you fair. get the listening figures back on on you know and see what, how epi- which episode did well? I don't really right. look at all that stuff because I think I we find... probably need to because I'd like to see <laughs> in comparison to Emma Thompson and Michael Sheen how I went. Yeah. Um, did I shit all? <laughs> did I shit all over them in terms of viewing figures? Um, I think. I don't remember know. whose podcast you're on? Oh no, you are absolutely the most popular. Fine. Of course, goes without saying. Um, but it's interesting. I I really don't. I mean, I was joking about the you know two hundred and whatever it was million seventy five million. Um, yeah, uh, joking, but that's but, probably the exact number. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're like, there's like, no all, up all, there. all jokes aside, but that's exactly the figures hot off the press this morning. Um, but I feel like, and you might agree with your shows, it's not the healthiest thing to kind of fixate on that. No, because then that starts to kind of feed into your show, and then. Because we never wanted the show to feel like it had changed, really. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? From like season one to season five, it obviously has changed and evolved and stuff, but not because of oh, there's now people listening to us in you know the Vatican or whatever. (laughs) I don't think they are. No, they are. They are. are. Yeah, yeah. We actually have data on that. Because do you know what is? Because because you're affecting 275 million people. That that religion and the interest in religion is dipping down. <laughs> genuine, genuine, like inter- like religion. Like, there's a, because there's a, of my dad wrote a porn, it was just generally. Mm, well, it just. I, I'm not going to say that your dad, Rocky Flintstone, is you know responsible for religion going down. But genuinely, <laughs> churches and different religions, <clears throat> yeah, of course, are really yeah. struggling to get more numbers in mm. because of I think uh, education stuff. So maybe they've gone fuck. What's the competition? They're doing? desperate. Maybe you know. the Pope will start. I mean, I probably get struck down with. This. I don't really care. Um, but you know, he's maybe going to start something like. You know, I don't know what you'd start if you're no, very careful. There. Look how sketchy look, you are. Look, you're no, like, no, no. Your reputation could be destroyed he, in one podcast. <laughs> Not possible. Um, he he's very liberal though, isn't he? This pope. Yes, he is. Yeah, you yeah, know, for yeah. A, for a pope. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm not sure he's the most liberal person. In the world. No, I don't think they're. Yeah, like maybe condoms is a good idea. This one thought that was maybe, a good idea. maybe. You know, gays you're not board. going to hell. So you know, that's pretty. Yeah, I don't know. Are they, are they, are <laughs> that's they the boundary that? there. Yeah, that is the level of like a a like <laughs> as liberal as they a go. liberal person from the Catholic Church is. Gays are okay, not brilliant, but they're okay. And condoms, when required, pretty much. Pretty much that, that's, that's you've you've summed up a whole religion there, James. Well done. So, what was more disturbing, or what was more exciting, the success of the, the podcast, or actually finding out your dad had written porn? <laughs> um, well, the porn itself was so stimulating; it has to be that. But I just, I just um, want to know, like, I want to know how, like, how, how did this, like, how mm. did you come about? Like, did your dad like volunteer it, like, sit down at the table and go, yeah. Jeremy, I, t- I tell you what. I've got something for you. Yes, that's the that's the most worrying part of it for me personally, because you know he was he'd recently retired, he was a builder and whatever, um, He's and he a was builder. just bored. Shut up! I did yeah. not visualize, visualize him being a builder. Yes, yeah, so he hadn't ever written anything down really, not even like a shopping list, and then decided to become a novelist overnight in the garden shed. And you, and you know, when you read the text, you can tell that. It's yeah, like, it's like, yeah. it's like, it's like, it's like, he kind of learns as he goes along, like chapter by chapter, it slowly gets a little bit better. Like the grammar gets a little bit tighter. Um, and so he was really proud of writing this novel, but he didn't tell me what it was about or anything like that. He was just said, I'm writing a novel because he's from Northern Ireland. Right. Um, it's going to be great. I was like, great. That's actually a really good thing. I was really on board actually. Cause I was like, it's a good thing to do in retirement. You know, keeps your mind fresh, whatever. Quite cathartic, you know, like yeah, they talk creative. about uh, avoiding dementia, reading, All of writing. That stuff, yeah, exactly. Okay. And it, you know, kept him up. My Cause he's got house, a shed so in the garden, isn't he as well? Yeah. Where he, his... Bottom of the garden. Yeah. Like Roald Dahl. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or David Cameron. Um, less like David yes, Cameron. Less like more, yeah. more like Roald Dahl. Fine. Um, and yeah, he just started writing. And then one day he just presented it to me and he was like, here you go. Here's the book. I was like, oh, great. And you know when your parents, like, give you some, like, you know, if they, like, find an article that, yeah. they, that like, you might like, you don't read it. No, no, of course you do don't. You? No. I mean, you don't ever no. read it. No, I mean, um, I, I, my mum sent me an email today, a picture of <laughs> my uncle who's run a tennis tournament. And, oh, I, right. and, I, and he sent me, oh, look, it was just a picture of my mum's my, my, my brother there just standing on the side of the thing with a clipboard. And it went, no, oh, he's run a tournament. I just went... Lovely stuff, yeah. and sent that, and have fucking deleted it. Because what? What did she think? Deleted it. Well, what? Michael, what's the point? <laughs> what, what are you worried about? Your storage? What's wrong with you? No, I no, yeah. it. Storage is really important in, <laughs> in twenty twenty. Like this coronavirus is really bad, but running over that terabyte of free Apple Honestly, stuff. I'm constantly having to mate, up it. I know. I, I get bills. Racket. You got to get Apple like Apple expense two more pounds. It's like fuck me. How much? Te- I I've got more terabyte than the US government. In, in, <laughs> in, 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 I'm not even storing anything. Um, <laughs> but no, yeah. So I, so I, I didn't read it initially, and then. I would get these weird messages from him, like emails saying, have you read the book yet? 
Because I think he might have been a bit like, fuck. Yeah, Maybe but the very I've really fact you haven't his mind because he didn't say it was porn. Yeah, but the fact is, you because because he didn't tell it was porn, you haven't mm. registered it. The very fact you couldn't even blag it. Yeah, I, I, exactly. And I think I might have said something like, "Oh yeah, it's great, good job" or something. And he was like, "Really?" Ah, oh, because um, we had Dylan Hartley on the, the England captain. He said yeah. Eddie Jones, the coach, used to give him articles, and one day gave him a book on baseball. Pushed it across the camera and went, mate, best book ever, right? Unbelievable, <laughs> right? And, and it, Dylan reckons he got it and it had never been read. Mm. And he was like, is this, a, is, this a, is this a fucking trick? Is this, yeah, is, yeah, this, yeah. this has got to be a trick? He's messing out. And every time he, he'd go, Eddie would go, mate, how's a book? And Dylan would be like, good. He'd be like, yes, mate, it's good. And then later on he said to Eddie, did you ever read that book? He's like, no, mate. <laughs> the very fact that your dad's written porn, it, it, he must have been like, what is wrong with him? He, you know, or or a, did you thought maybe he thought you loved it? Well... It's one of the things that I haven't really delved too deeply into the Fine. psychosis of, to be honest with you. But like, I would have done. Or maybe it'll break <laughs> you. Maybe it's something that if you do delve in too deeply, I don't want it to break me because I kind of had this moment of. It was a bit of a crossroads, really, because once I started reading it and realised it was porn and also so shit. Yes, because it's not even like it's good. Because if no. it was good, it could be like, oh, you know, there's a market for that. Yeah, it was fucking bullshit, as you know. Mm. So then you were like. <laughs> What do I do? I just pretend I've never read it, yeah, and try and suppress it, which is pretty unhealthy long term, yeah. Or do I just confront it and read it out loud to the world? Because <laughs> you know, because you know what happens is is in that um, fantastical uh, was it magical beast and fant- whatever the fantastical beast yeah. and where to find them. Mm. You know that person tries to repress himself so much that he becomes seen obscure. It, no, you've never seen? No, you've never seen it. No. Okay, well, basically... Is that shocking? Yeah, it's quite shocking. <laughs> really? yeah, well, okay. I, I, it's not I, a classic. I think you'll find it is, actually. <laughs> okay. I, think, I think Eddie Redmayne's in it. I think it is. I don't know. Yeah, anyway, yeah, okay. So basically, I'll give you the premise of it. It's a wizard, right? Mm. And he doesn't want to be a wizard, so he's been rep- he's repressed himself right, so much okay. that the magical power bursts out of him and basically creates something called an Obscurus, which is this destroying thing that you can't control it. It's, like, terrible. Okay. That, I imagine that's what you would turn into yeah. if you tried to exactly. repress. Because it, it would, it would just, just at some point it would go. My, my dad's wrote a porn up. And you'd be like, what? And you'd like be on a bell tower. <laughs> and he can't gun. fucking spell. He that's can't the worst spell. Part. And he, he doesn't understand anything about sex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it was one of those moments. And those because uh, not that I decided to read it, you know, but share it. Right. And I just called my mates, two of whom were Alice and James, a big group of us actually. A lot of them didn't make the cut. Oh, <laughs> really? Yeah, Ooh, I know. Tight. And it's been awkward ever since. Has it? Like the past five years, we all meet up and stuff. And they're like, so how's that podcast going then? Oh. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, good. I'm like, cool, cool. Don't listen to it, mate. I'm like, oh, yeah. No, it's fine. You don't need to. Do you have those friends? Because I've got a friend called Gary Truman, who I love, who who listens to everything. But then he goes, oh, that podcast, I haven't listened to it. don't really know anything about it. But then knows everything about it. And then goes, well, that's a bit, that bit but I don't really care. I don't really care. <laughs> They've listened to it. There's no way they haven't listened to I it. I think they sk- one of my friends listens to it at double speed. Because uh, oh, he wants yeah. to be supportive, but then also can't be asked to yeah, actually fine. listen to it. And I'm like, that's a fair compromise. Yeah. Um, but no, I think a few of them, they just find it too painful to listen to. But can you can just talk me through the exact moment that when that mm. manuscript came yeah. came through, w- did it, was it like, so you saw Belinda blinked on the front, did it have a front cover? No, no, it was, um, it was actually an email attachment. So he emailed it to me and he was right, like, Right, okay, and then you, this, and, and here's you, the book. You just double clicked it. And, it was like, and then you, at what point did you pick your phone up and go, either to your friends or someone and go, Christ, this, this is... Pretty much immediately. I kind of read that, because the first line is, as you know, Belinda Blink, yeah. the job interviewer just asked her to remove her jacket and silk blouse. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, holy shit. In the, the leather, in the, in the, in the, what point, I can't remember, yeah, that, but they were in the leather. Yeah, that, as well, yeah that's they? like, yeah, like chapter two or something. <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck? So I went and got a drink. <laughs> Because I was like, maybe it's just maybe it's trying to like you know have a racy start. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it's just a normal. It's like book. a bomb bomb movie. Something. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's like a sexy scene to start the action, yeah. and then you just get normal. And then as it just went down, it was all about her getting like he's she's in a job interview and she's being asked to strip naked, yeah. and then they like play with her and stuff. And it's like, what the fuck, dad? But don't they play really badly with their breasts? It's like a real, like a, it's like a <laughs> like terrible job. Her yeah, with like nails. Yeah, and stuff. it's like a like if you, I, you know, it's one of those things that like you know if you didn't know about it, you you read it and you'd like check in with your go. Do you, want your, do you want your nipples twisted? Do, do you want to be punched in the breast? Because and you're like, no, okay, that's another thing that definitely <laughs> good to know. Because like, yeah, yeah. uh, that never happens in this establishment. That's good. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And then and then yeah, about maybe halfway through the chapter, I just put on the group chat. I was like, guys, we need to go to the pub and like chat about something. I need to just like get this yeah, off me yeah. 
because it made me feel a little bit. Because we've had someone, we had um, someone with your exact same name from yes, the SCS. This is insane. <laughs> How two worlds collide. Isn't it? <laughs> I was like, is this just Jamie Morton what? with James Haskell oh, on the podcast? One's peddling porn. The other <laughs> one's a former uh, special force soldier. Who's doing more for society? You oh, know, I'll easily let, me. I'll, I'll let you, the viewer, decide. Um, Listener, James, come on. Yeah, Lister, sorry. No, oh, oh, no, it is a viewer. Oh, oh, hi. Yes, of course. Sorry. Don't tell you didn't realise you're on camera. I see you've done your hair, so it's absolutely okay. <laughs> I actually have, I've been fucking building all morning. What have you um, been building? Uh, actually, me and my dad are building a wall oh. in my house. <laughs> it's our little lockdown, not like lockdown anymore, but our little um, coronavirus right. project. But obviously, the podcast um, has paid off, so you've upgraded the house. <laughs> I did buy a house. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Well, oh, I will come it, was all, it was all your episode. Oh, that, oh, that, that oh, wow. What's the big viewing figures? 27 minutes in front of me. Um, <laughs> trying to work that out in ACAST stuff and figures. I'm like, trying to go, how much has he actually made? Um, so then you went down a pub and you sat yeah. down, and, then, and, then, and they were like, because obviously having met Alice and James, they must have, yeah. James especially must have just been like... Lost his shit. And, and Acid Tongue Alice must have just been like... Yeah. Mm. Well, it was a big group of us and everyone was kind of... Ch- I mean, it took about, honestly, maybe like three or four hours to read one one chapter because everyone was stopping me every third word being like, what the fuck? <laughs> and I was like, guys, just can we just get through it? Um, and then it was actually Alice that became worryingly obsessed with it yeah. and asked for a copy of it and she'd read it at parties and stuff that she was going to and I'd read it to people and then we kind of got together at one point and, we were like, and she was like we should do something with this um, and so yeah that that was kind of the germ of the idea of, of uh, doing the podcast so it did happen quite organically it wasn't like oh you know let's make and a then, show and then as soon as you, but then because because you because people were giving that reaction you mm. just knew that, that people that was needed it, to exactly. hear it. Exactly, people it, like it, it was a sort of thing that always landed, you know, in any kind of social engagement, yeah. or whatever. It always did well. Fine. So we were like, actually, maybe there is legs to this. Right. Um, and then we recorded a kind of, kind of like a pilot episode thing, um, just to test it out. And then I edited. I remember editing that together. I remember actually, me and James were going to Budapest for like just a weekend, piss up weekend, and I'd edited it that week. And we were in the airport at like. 6 a.m. in the pub, and I was like, James, I think it's, I think it's kind of good. Can you listen to it? And he was like, Yeah, yeah, I'll listen to it on the plane. I was like, No, listen to it now. And I was like, I've never done that with anything I'd ever made Fine, before. But you, really. you, you so I kind of knew gold, that something yeah. was good in it, um, or at least something that I was proud of. And then we just ended up just using that as the first episode. Yeah, because we, we were we planned to re-record the first app, but it just felt so natural and kind of off the cuff that we were like, well, we can't re- reproduce this. And then that was how we decided to me read it to them for the first time on mic. Fine. So then that's kind of how it all and started. And that, that really. their first experience of it. Exactly, you know, yeah. Because because honestly, it is, it's so remarkable that it's the first thing that I rec- tell anybody to listen to. Oh, thanks. Do, do, no, just a minute. Look, I, you know, I'm one of these, like I'm, credit is, you know, credit's uh, due where it's due is that um, I, it is uh, just incredible because I think well, the rest of the world is falling apart and we are in lots of ways improving things in, in 2020, making stands for the right things and, mm. and drawing lines and stuff. Laughter and humour and escapism are probably something that is even more prevalent now than, than yeah. ever. And you have brought that. You have... It's you funny know. you say that, actually, because people often ask me about, you know, oh, why do you think it became so successful so quickly and whatever and... Because it's a very niche thing. You yeah. wouldn't think that someone's dad's porn would That's be That's what I mean. Because cause, cause also, if you imagine, with those viewing figures, and, and what, what I said to you beforehand was, it's, there's some taboos in there. Like, but mm. the, the way it's engineered yeah, yeah, yeah. is, you know, you said about me for the first time, I was controversial, which I <laughs> it's a real <laughs> shock to the system. Um, but actually, the very fact that it's become mainstream, that porn and this language yeah. has become mainstream, because it's... It's so bad because it could easily, if your dad had mm. actually been competent and understood anything about the female anatomy, right. it 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 could have just been quite shitty porn, yeah. but a bit too aggressive. But because exactly because it's, it's so naive, yeah. he's so base level yeah. that, it, that there's an innocence to it that is oddly appealing, yes. even though it's shit. And I think because we 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 launched in 2015, and we kind of were riding this really weird shift globally. Brexit was about to happen. Trump was about to be elected. <laughs> there was it was a pretty dark time yeah, yeah, in the yeah, world, yeah. and I think it's I not honestly, got any lighter. It really I'm, hasn't. No, I know yeah. it's, uh, it's doing wonders for the porn business, um, but I do think that maybe that was one of the reasons why it caught on because I think people were looking for, like you say, escapism, something that's 
just stupid and not political and not about the stuff that we yeah. are inundated every day by that just makes us all go a little bit crazy, even though it's important stuff. I think it was a time that, and it still is a time that, yeah, a bit of a respite from that is important. And I think we came at the right time in many ways. Did you say to your dad, dad, we're making a podcast? Or did you ask for permission? Yeah, I remember. <laughs> yeah, I was like, dad, I want to do a podcast of this, if that's all, all right. Like, read it out. And he's like, that's absolutely fantastic. <laughs> What's a podcast? <laughs> oh, God. Like, oh, dad. It's like your dad's never been off the building site. Honestly, well, he hadn't really. This is the thing. He's... He, he, and he's from Northern Ireland, which, you know, when he grew up in the 50s, oh, well, yeah, was but... a very kind of, you know, small town. Yeah, well, I mean, because, you, know, you, know. like you know, things like in Ireland, abortion, everything else, that, I don't know if it's, if it's still not legal or, or, or at some parts. In Northern, of it. I think, oh, no, yeah. maybe Northern Ireland it is, but in Ireland, in, you know what I mean? Yeah. It just, there's certain things there because it's very religious. They're socially conservative. Yes, yeah, yeah. definitely. And so, it, it, it's, I mean, I don't know which um, person you had on the footnotes, but it's very much like uh, your dad learnt stuff about sex. Like almost walking past yes, people yeah, yeah, who were yeah. talking about it, like picked up or via like school whispers. Yeah, it's like yeah, yeah. You and I were talking about something, and he's gone. Oh, yeah, that's oh that must be what it is. That's what you've got to do. Yeah, you know, yeah, sort yeah, of yeah. Get, you know, you've got really four punched in the cervix or whatever he says. <laughs> you know, and they're like pomegranates. You're like, oh, that's what tits yeah. look like, pomegranates. And I kind of love the fact that he just didn't give a shit. No, he just did it, and no. still to this day is. Really proud of it in a as he should be. You yeah, know, it's I a think... really big success, and he's you know, it's he's so new to this whole. I mean, he's a fucking exec producer on an HBO show. Yeah, well... sake. I mean, it's <laughs> we, were, we, we were we were recording it, and he just went around to everyone there, being like, "Hello, I am the executive producer. Good to meet you." I was like, "Jesus Christ!" Though. Yeah, but you've got to let. But him he, do it is, because, he is. He is because it's just like... imagine that a builder from Northern Ireland has yeah. a show on HBO with his you know with his yeah. son and his friends and two hundred. It's like. You know, they talk about like the, you know, the, the, the old cliche of the American dream. Mm. The, the one benefit of 2020 now is that if you have an idea and it's actually got legs, it can fucking go yeah. anywhere. And that's the beauty of things like podcasting, because it's because it's such a medium that it, it kind of is one of those few spaces that is still a meritocracy, really. And, that yeah. you know, good shows that aren't produced by the big hitters can actually find an audience because it is a level playing field isn't it things yeah. like you know like you said gender and, and racial they don't come into it because it doesn't yeah, matter yeah. there isn't you know the, the biggest media company in the world can make a podcast and it can be absolutely toilet you know three yeah. people in are balancing microphones on books in a house and talking about porn can get you know the yeah. more downloads than anyone's ever had it's weird isn't it because like you know as we were saying earlier like every fucker's got a podcast now which yeah. is great and it's great for the medium that it's popular and that people want to invest in it. But it, I, I I do find it interesting that, you know, just because you're a celebrity doesn't mean you'll necessarily have a hit that, podcast. And it is it is still one of those interesting pieces of media yeah. that those two things don't correlate. Success and being a name doesn't necessarily mean you're going to have a hit show. No. I think it's really quite refreshing I think actually. it's good yeah I think it's a really positive you know. thing but I think you you know do you know how many people or have you ever thought about how many people you've inspired to then go into to podcasting going because somebody you know like when you go into these meetings I always talked about it and be like oh uh, mm. you know my dad wrote a point you know, the, the numbers and you you know that said you know, that'd be the dream to get and they're like people are going Pfft. yeah <laughs> all right mate you're like no what I mean and then someone tells you what numbers are you're like I mean yeah probably not that quite that yeah. quite big but people would have I've heard your podcast going, do you know what? I can, mm. I can do that. Like your dad, I reckon. Didn't I he hope hear, so. Didn't yeah. he hear about, um, is it Fifty Shades of Grey? And he was like, I yeah, can. Yeah, well, that, I think that's why he wrote porn. She's, I think that's why he chose porn. She cause... sold the thing for 500 million quid. Your dad's yeah. like, I can yeah, do that. Yeah, he heard that she was minted and he was like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll just do that. I think that was basically why. And that was all he thought about. He was like, how would I write a hit book? Make it about sex. <laughs> that seems to work. Sex sells, doesn't it? Uh, turns out, yes, 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 it does. On a free podcast, can you imagine? Your, your, I feel like your mum's like the unsung hero of all this. How, how did she? Really she is, actually. How did she take the fact that you were going to not only because it, it, I think I imagine, you know, is your mum Irish? Is she English? She's English. She's from Middlesbrough. So Middlesbrough. So a lady from Middlesbrough. You know, she's had a husband who's a builder, mm -hmm. right? She's got you know because you've been in the arts, done stuff, and she's probably like you know all proud of all of you. And then she finds out that her husband is sitting in the garden shed writing pornography, yeah. and it's like some wives have to go through stuff, and like there's a lot of eye rolling. But then, mm. but then her son wants to take what should be a private, 
sort of like a, a, a horrific yeah. scar that, that you can wear as a family. Mm. You yeah, a brought, family joke that doesn't ever leave. Doesn't ever leave the bit, and it's yeah. like an embarrassment. She's like, oh, you know, Rocky, mm. you, you know, you know, just get back in the shed and don't disturb she me. She never calls him Rocky. Uh, <laughs> What? There are things that she will not do. Fine. But then, but, then, <laughs> but then you've gone, i tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this horrific case of fares mm. and I'm going to broadcast it everywhere. Yeah. How does she take this? She was amazing about it. I mean, she found it quite funny that he was doing it, I think. I mean, she was shocked and whatever. Um, more shocked when she read it. Yeah. Um, but um, in fact, she doesn't listen, actually. She's she somebody not? that doesn't listen. No, she, lis- she listened to the, um, um, the Emma Thompson one. Of course, she did. everyone loves uh, Emma Thompson. You know, yeah, she's like British hero. TV heritage, yeah. Yeah, and I think she listens to the one with Lin Manuel Miranda. Right. Because she likes Hamilton. Right. Uh, but Don't listen to James Howard. Oh, I'm sure she's listened to yours as well. Fine. Uh, I mean, who hasn't? It's oh, obviously. She's the most successful is, episode yeah, ever. I have heard that. Um, so she was very kind of. I, don't, I mean, I actually don't know why she was so cool about it because you would think. It's the worst for her. In yes. a way. it's almost worse for her than for Dad. In a, in, yes, in, a, in a way, it is. She, she by um, all, because, she, because your Dad, when you read it, you understand that your Dad is like he's like he. I would love to meet your Dad because I think he's he would. From what I've read, he's like a lovely, slightly kind of naive mm. bloke to real world. Like imagine he'd be like really down to earth. You know, he is again. He see like he sort of picked. Well, he was down to earth before he became. Yeah, I was going to say he's, uh, he's he's now a tyrant. I can imagine <laughs> because that's the problem is when when people who have never experienced that experience it, it sends them two ways. They either become really good, you know, yeah. good, or they go ego maniacal, mani- ego maniacal maniacs. I do call him Ego Mortensen. Re- ego, <laughs> that's Mortensen. my nickname for him now. I love that. Um, no, but he he's he's great. I think I think the fact that they it it, it was nice for me as a son actually to to see that they had quite a strong marriage that could sustain this kind of, you know, torpedo. Um, but she's great. And and I think I think she's just a bit like, whatever, I'll get on with it. She doesn't really give a shit, to be honest with you. I think she's a bit like, look, it keeps him out of the house, keeps him busy. He's got a project. You two can, like, have fun travelling the world with it. This Good, is vulgar, because no because no son ever wants to think this. But I mean, no, when I read it, do you, do you ever just think, she's just, oh, my poor mum? Like, because uh, do you ever look at it and go... I know no one ever wants to think about their parents having sex. If you ever think yeah. to yourself, how was I created? Because, because dude, all the fucking time, it's ins- I mean, one thing that my mum did say was, she said, "I was like, you sure you're okay with this one?" She was like, "Yeah." And do you know what? At least I know he's never had an affair. Yes. Like I think because he way, hasn't got any better any, any knowledge at all. She's like, he wouldn't know what to do, would he? Let's be honest. No, because like, but, but even by the sheer is. science and mechanics, the ch- you know, because normally like ch- the beauty of childbirth and like, having a baby, chances can, you know, aren't always that mm. high. The way your dad's doing sex, the chance <laughs> got of four you, kids. I, how? I mean, how? I, I mean, know. unless unless <laughs> unless your mum was is like the first time that your dad ever got with. It. She went, "I'm not having that." And there's a pool boy round the corner. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That is actually your real yeah, dad. I'm not related to him at all. It's <laughs> all it's, it's all it's all a lie. Um, yeah, but I think I think she's just very very cool. And actually, to see them because my mum, you know, was kind of the breadwinner for a lot of our childhood and stuff. And was he not very good at building as well? No, he was, but like, <laughs> right, you know, yeah, there's I a know. ceiling yeah, to yeah, that yeah. industry and whatever. But if he put it out, they're probably fucking <laughs> <busy>. <laughs> yeah, Exactly. Um, so I think there's something really sweet now when he can, like, Fine, buy provide. Our stuff. Yeah, and, yeah, like, yeah. you know, they came on tour with us earlier this year before it all got cancelled. Thanks, Corona. Um, <laughs> and, like, and he flew out business class and they'd never done Amazing. that before. And they came, they came to Australia and they. And that you know, I gave them a tour around the the Sydney Opera House, and we performed there. And yeah, because you did you, just did so you nice. do it twice? Didn't you sell four that? times? Four times, sold the whole thing out. Yeah. Is it? Do you look back at it um, on the events you had? And obviously, I know Corona's put a, put a halt to some of it, and mm. go. I just never imagined Royal Albert Hall, Sydney Opera House, yeah. uh, HBO, was it eight, yeah, for HBO, yeah, the, the, this level that it got to. I mean, you couldn't have predicted it, and. That's why it means a lot because it's been so unexpected. And yeah. It's happened so organically. A lot of people do ask me about podcasts and you know for advice and stuff, and they kind of they 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 want what we've achieved without wanting to make a show that they're proud of right. necessarily. Yeah, that's what everybody does, isn't it? Yeah, and I think that's a shame because you know we never expect. I mean, you know, the, the, there was no precedent for us. To, to want that because no podcast you sell never out knew that you'd financially before, be able to get you know you probably set, set it up with with James Allis like you said sacked off you're probably not that great friends anymore to, to and, <laughs> and whittled <laughs> yeah. it down to create a podcast 
uh, and then when obviously the money comes in, you, you didn't do it for that reason. And that's yeah. why you were successful. I, I mean, exactly. And I think, like I was saying earlier, to not let that affect the show that you're making at any point and you know for it to suddenly be like oh now we're this big show like no one gives a shit like just make people laugh keep it honest you know do you do you think that you've bracketed yourselves it like are you aware that probably you know the, the success you've had with this even though people are asking for advice do you think you could replicate it i mean is that something that you have you think a lot about how do we keep this this dream going or when it's done it's done not really i kind of just think this is a singular moment Fine. in my life and you know, it's so it's so rare to kind of have a hit with anything. Yeah. You're so lucky to make something that people enjoy. I think to kind of want to replicate that or or or, or, or to put the pressure on yourself that you have to no. up it somehow. Why? I'm really proud of the show. I mean, I've got to do it with my two best mates and my dad. Yeah. It doesn't really get much better than that. No. So And also you've got a whole whole host of blinkers who are like insane who, who yeah. dress up at every event yeah, yeah you who, you've seen us live you've yeah seen i saw because i yeah. came to your first was it the first one ever? of our first ever yeah. gigs yeah i think you met i don't know i think i tweeted about it. you messaged me on twitter actually yeah, said, would like, you, you come, come down, down. Yeah. And i remember saying to chloe i was up in north Hampton, i said chloe, we're going down she's like for what for what and i said <laughs> you've got to listen to this podcast and then we turned up and everybody was dressed up yeah and it was it was it's, yeah, it, was it was mad. mad. Yeah, it was in it's in the church. It I was remember. in a church, which was very interesting. Again, <laughs> yeah, talking about like I mean, I've got some of the quotes here. Was it spaghetti? You know, what was it? I, I'm trying to find some of the the, the other the, the other weird things. Obviously, I think there's a bit where they, you were reading potentially one where that woman got caught in the um in the maze and, co- and covered in semen runes. And, and yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, the, you know, semen and mud. Semen what, and mud. Yeah. What a mixture. Came out with like twigs in her lid, and everyone's yeah. like, "Where's she been?" <laughs> And someone gets all that. Someone loses their hair because yeah. you got fucked too hard. <laughs> like there's all this weird shit that happens. It, and that was read in the church. So that was it. Yeah, I mean, not a still an active church. We should say that. Um, but yeah, I, I think there's something about Rocky, like my dad's work, that just people bend the rules. Like even HBO is like, what are you getting into bed with yeah. porn for? I mean, I know you've got HBO. Um, you've got Game of Thrones, which is basically porn, which is organized um, porn. Yeah, yeah. But exact organized being the key word. Yes. Exactly. This is just carnage. Um, so yeah, it, it has been very surprising, and you know, I remember back at the start of it all, you know, before there was really any advertising and podcasting generally, but you know, no one touched our show for two years. No one wanted to have anything to do with it, and then I guess it, it got to a point where it became known enough for people to kind of take a risk on it. And now, well, because the know, figures are undeniable. That's that's the thing is because I remember yeah. the very first thing you did. I remember listening to the first couple. No sponsors. Yeah, and yeah. then and then you. I remember whole first season, t- first two seasons. Yeah, I think, and yeah. then suddenly it was like mattresses or mattresses or yeah, beer, yeah. F- beer fifty two or or yeah, some, Squarespace, square, like, yeah, like old school, yeah. like yeah, because because I didn't understand about podcasting then. Obviously, I, right. I'd listened to them. I remember, you know, as I said, I listened to Ricky Gervais ones early doors. Yeah, um, you know the ones he did on politics, English, mm-hmm. the English language. You know, with Carl Pilgrim. Yeah, but with your one, it was the first time. I remember you guys reading it, like James. What are you doing with uh, beer? And you're like, well, actually, I'm ordering beer. And, was going, and I was like, <laughs> yeah. what the hell are they talking about? It was really exciting for us doing our first sponsor read because we were such big fans of like serial and American podcasts. It made us feel like we were a legitimate. proper podcast. Yeah. It's, it's an odd thing that, yeah, it, it kind of lent us legitimacy in a way that I think we never expected given the subject matter of our show. And it was like, oh, we're, we're, we're a proper podcast now. We're like doing like sponsor reads for Squarespace. This is mad. So. Yeah, so it's a it's a funny medium in that way that it kind of slowly becomes you slowly you slowly kind of become part of the gang in a way. Has has fame and, and fortune affected the relationship with the, with the three of you to, or the other the other two? No, not really. I mean, no diva moments. I mean, any 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 strict like? Do you have? The, oh, I mean, we obviously have our moments of being like, ugh. But that's <laughs> but but that I mean, you know, when you're touring the world and stuff, like, yeah, anyone's gonna get on your tits, aren't yeah, they? I mean. Yeah. But it is really fun, and I think the fact that we knew each other so well and we're such good friends has actually been kind of essential. Because I can't imagine doing this with people that I didn't already know yeah. really well. Or like, it's like any band, isn't it? Like One Direction or something. It's like they weren't mates before that. They just were kind of thrown Forced together, and they were kind well, of mates. put together by Simon Cow. Exactly, and they became friends, I guess. But they weren't ever really. I mean, I don't know them. But I, I, I would imagine that you know there wasn't a, a great solid foundation, so that no. when the pressure comes they're going to crack. Whereas, you know, with James and Alice, like I've known them since I was 18. Because sometimes they say they're working with friends and family can be worse because it can, it can yeah. irreparably change the relationship because you can't ever go back and, you know. Yeah. I think there is truth in that, but I think, I don't, we, we've just always been really lucky about this is business chat. Fine. This is fun 
we're just mates now. I, I th- again, I think you have to have that those boundaries, and I, and I think I found it trickier to be honest with you initially with my dad that kind of that that balance because he was understanding about the entertainment industry and media and like we wrote a book quite early on and like dealing with agents and yeah that. and and it was just all so new I got a copy to of him book. there you go um and and i think that that took a little bit of for that generation though as well yeah that as well everything yeah. they, but, but is he quite hard on himself with uh, criticisms of media because my parents for example no, in the sporting do not no. cuz in the sporting world if, if, the, if, my, if they wrote a bad article about me or someone had said James wasn't going to be in the England team or this happened they'd take it to heart and it'd be a real, it'd be a real issue because they didn't right. understand that we as players just didn't give a shit yeah. like, I, was, yeah. I just wondered whether your dad like would come in and be like I've just spoken to someone and we're, go, you know, we're going into you know, we're making dildos you'd be like what dad? and like having to like keep reining him back in or <laughs> he's, no, he's actually quite good at that sort of stuff um, and he's actually kind of the business mind of the whole show oh really? Honestly. yeah because we don't know what the fuck we're doing no, no okay. like, you know, he calls us Idiot lovies, media types. He's like, you don't know how to fucking do anything to do with money. <laughs> and we're like, yeah, lovies. you're right, you're right. Um, but no, and he loves it. I think, I think we all enjoy. I, I personally love a bad review. <laughs> I don't know if you yeah. feel the same. I don't look. I, to be honest with you, I don't look at them. I think they're quite. I mean, obviously, we do sometimes this, um, examples of mean tweets and stuff. I yeah. remember, you know, in couples quarantine, with my wife, someone just went. You know, this is this is shit. You know, using all the kind of language we're trying to move from twenty twenty. Yeah. But I see everyone else really loves it, so maybe I'm out of touch. <laughs> they even, <they'd> even <laughs> looked at themselves. I thought that was quite a nice one. There was there was an article um, or like a review in the Times last Christmas, right? And they were doing all these roundups of like cultural events of the of like the decade because it was the end of the decade. Right. And um and someone reviewed us, and it said something like, um. If I had to choose the worst cultural event of the decade, it would be having to sit through my dad wrote a porno at the Royal Albert Hall, and it and it starts like that, and it is just it is brutal this this review, and it's framed in my downstairs toilet. I love because I fucking love it. It made me laugh so much because it's it doesn't mean anything. No. Do you know what I mean? It's no, like, but also it doesn't mean anything because you're successful. And if you, if you, so basically, I, I, what I would do if I was you, when that went on and, and you saw a review, I would just log on to my online bank account and I'd be like this. <laughs> oh, I think we're actually okay. That's how, but what, well, I wouldn't even care even if three people listen to it. I don't give a shit. No, I know you did, but that's why you've been successful. People didn't want to do it. But when you get to a certain level, mm. right, is I, I wouldn't care about criticism because yeah. I was I, all I cared about was my teammates and exactly. peers and you're coaches being respectful. What you're yeah. Doing. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, and I knew I right. knew that what these people say wasn't right. But also, if you have a level of success, if you if nobody listened to your podcast yeah. and it went on and someone had slated it and you had nothing about yourself, it can, it would you, you might it might break you. But because yeah. you have such success, two hundred seventy five million listens. You could get slagged mm. by every mainstream media. <laughs> they could do a Channel Four documentary on how your your porno has is, is is you know given rise to sex with underage yeah, people, seriously. and it wouldn't fucking matter. I mean, you might feel a little bit guilty about it because I know a you you know you, I know you, you already got a bit better about moral compass than I have because <laughs> I have, don't have a moral compass. It's broken. I was like, in, in that I have one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I, I yeah, but I mean I, I think the criticism thing is is interesting, but the, but that's the worst it's ever mm. been, is it? Oh, we get shit all the time, but that just made me laugh because it was in the Times. I was like, because I was like. I'm so proud because I don't think you can get a worse review than that. No. In the Sunday Times, worst cultural event of the decade. I mean, there is, yeah. I'm proud of that. That's I, just hilarious. I mean, almost as, as bad as my, my, my next guest that I've got on is my, is my best friend, Paul Doran Jones. And, mm. you know, we, we got into a little incident at school and we ended okay. up actually making, well, we got accused of making a porno and we didn't actually. And it was front page <laughs> of the newspaper and everything else. What the fuck? You're joking? Uh, yeah, no. How I'm, have we never I, discussed I know, this? I know, I know. What? I know. Right, and, and but the best bit was that when I got called up for England, which should be the proudest moment of your life. This is yeah. all in Mark Flanker. I tell tell it much more in detail. And it was uh, in the Times. It was uh, England call up for Haskell with peeping Tom past. Oh my Imagine God. a parent like this is my moment. <laughs> this is the greatest thing. Like well, welcome to England. Like other families are crying, <laughs> yeah. so proud. Like I watched the New Zealand All Blacks. They, but you know, oh there was one. God, there was like in, in one village. There was like a little village, and there was a phone on the wall. That's all they could afford. And the kids like oh, calling wow. up. And he's like crying. He's like, I've got some good news. I made the All Blacks. Right, everyone's oh. crying. Mine was, uh, you know, let's get ready for the Sex Nations. <laughs> Sex tries in videotapes, <laughs> yeah. and in the Times, you're like, fucking the Times has got that, that'll be the Times. That's the broadsheet. They know yeah, what they're talking oh, about. Yeah. England caught up for Haskell with peeping Tom Past. You're like, 
fucking what am I doing? So but that's also great. And then when my best mate made the day, made the day, it was like the old pair back together up to the old tricks. <laughs> And it, they found the porno. No, no, it got, Someone it got was destroyed. No, for that. People still think I'm carrying it around in my pocket. <laughs> that I'm, at any moment, I'm going to go, do the porno. Is that what you, you, you made a porno at school no, with no. your best mate? No, so, what, so no, 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 I wasn't having sex with my best mate. <laughs> it wasn't even that interesting. It was one of these situations where um, we had been, um, uh, Paul was uh, seeing a girl. Yeah, most of them naked, and um, and basically said, uh, "Have you got a video?" And I said, uh, "No, but I can find one." Sure, okay. And then what we did, what did us in the eye was we did a pre-match interview because obviously I <laughs> like the Salomon voice, um, mm. and, and obviously far from being like actual porn, he was wearing what can only be described as like charity shop boxers that were like <laughs> a, a shit green color, like you know, and um, there was a big size difference between the two of them, and uh, it was just right. terrible, but. The problem is at boarding school with nobody yeah, waiting yeah, around. Yeah, Everyone yeah, just yeah. talked about it, and obviously, the, you know, the mirror when it, when it came out it was like manna from heaven. It was like the last That's days of Rome. Hilarious. Everyone's depraved animals. It was yeah, <laughs> but, but but I was on the front page of paper. I bet the mirror went in on that. Elitist it was the fuckers. front page of the. I said to my, oh. I said to my, I basically went to an end of season wasps dinner, and the kit man came up to me. He's like, oh, Hass, I've, I've had the um, the mirror on the phone. They want me to um, verify a photo of you. And I said, well, did you do it? He went, yeah. So I came home and told my dad, I was like, Dad, I think I'm going to be in the paper tomorrow, right? And I slept in, woke up, and my dad was still home at 10.30, and I came in, he just went like this, held it up, and it was porn dorm, uh, you know, and 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 they blacked out my eyes wearing a scrum cap, so I looked like an absolute (laughs) deviant. Paul got a little segment in the thing, and just as I was like reading it, Six or seven carloads of press. Oh my with the rope, god! Through the letter, but putting tell your story, da, 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 mate. It, it, oh, so you've experienced that kind of major, that, oh, major shit, that's right? Mad. It was. Is it carnage. scary? Uh, like, because they could be quite threatening, like to have people around yeah, your yeah, house. Yeah, I mean, like, they, they were climbing over things. How do they know where you live, even? Uh, they always know how you live. You know, then they come photograph it. And they go. Uh, you know, Haskell, a million pound house. You know, everything's yeah, like yeah. favourite food, oysters and shit like that. You're like, you know. You know they know oh, you so well. Yeah. Oh, I saw them running over a couple of NHS people in their Range Rovers. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like that kind of level of shit. And yeah. it was, yeah, it was really punchy. And even the reason I talk about it in the book is because it's even now, I get sweaty students coming up to me like, did you, did you, you made a porno? And they like run off. You're like, no, I didn't. The, story, the real story's not there. But what, what the oh problem God. with the article was, they thought that I was physically hiding in the cupboard, refilming yeah, my mate right. Shaggy. Yeah. But because I never, never in the media now, I come out and just you put it on your own Instagram. And yeah, say, exactly. You could just, they yeah. thought I was like a contortionist, stuffed in this thing, wanking off on one hand, filming <laughs> Paul on the other. You know, while he was doing some graphic kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, I give him five out of ten for the job he did. I mean, obviously, <laughs> the, the thing with it is as well, where we went wrong is obviously you can't film someone without their knowledge. It's yeah, like yeah. terrible. It's yeah, complete it's terrible. fuck up a judgment. We shouldn't like, be laughing about it. Actually, it's terrible. <laughs> Yeah, no, you shouldn't. I love how serious you've tried to put the mate, it's out of the box now. Like, yeah, yeah, don't yeah. try and wind it back in. Oh, You're a I'm, terrible person, just so you I know. am a terrible person, and we've apologized it profusely. And I'm not proud of it, and you learn. But I was fucking 17. Yeah. Like we made a mistake, like we were idiots, and that and, and but ever since then I paid we've paid the price. And mm. you know, especially me, I, honestly, there's some fucker on my Wikipedia page that every mm. time we take it off, he just puts it back on again. Really? And he goes, It's the truth. You're like, oh, yes, but does everybody need to know? I'm 35. Mm. You know, and the first thing anyone turns up to at sporting events or dinners is like, James Haskell, here's his here speech this evening, and he made a porno at school, and everyone's like, ah, ha, ha, ha. you're like, mm. for fuck's sake. Because again, I think it's a life lesson to, to anybody about you know, I talk about it when I do stuff on, on, on serious podcasts about business, is that if you ever go into something to make money, more often mm. not you're going to fail. If you go into it because you love it and it's a passion, it ultimately always becomes, you know, a successful. Not always, but, yeah. it, but it can do. It can lead to money. I always just wondered at some point where you didn't go in it because you wanted to be successful. You wanted to go into it to have fun. But mm. that moment when, do you know what, you get a paycheck or you start seeing, because I know Spotify do that graph where they say, you know, you get 250,000 listeners with a sponsor of 80% sales or at least 170 grand. You're like, how do oh, I wow. get there? You know, and it, and, yeah. then, and, then, and it leans to those things, whether you would just sit there and be like, oh, I can probably buy that dinner now or I can fly off here or I can go out and mm. have something and not worry about, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely given, yeah, more security in that way. Um it's just been great. And yeah, and just getting to travel so much and, and like, you know, get nice presents for yeah. my sisters and, you know, just You're things such like a that. It's just guy. nice. Such well, no, it's guy. just nice to kind of. You're obviously not I selfish as I am. I'll be like, <laughs> <laughs> what can I buy? Chloe's like, what can you buy for me? Mm, don't worry about that. <laughs> what, what's next for you guys? Um, 
Well, so we t- well our tour is being rescheduled at some point um, next year, which is good. We're working on. T- I can't really talk about what Fine. it is okay. yet, but something really exciting. Because you've done the fifth book. Because how many? Did yeah. You, how many have you written? Um, oh, fuck knows. I don't know. Like t- fifteen or something. Oh really? He's, he's written loads, and he wrote because he wrote four before we started, and then he just carried on writing, and he and he writes them pretty quickly. So I um, think you can tell. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. Um, you, you almost said that as if I was going to go, oh, really? That's that's interesting. It literally sounds like I did it at a weekend <laughs> slightly drunk. Yeah. Slightly. Yeah. Very. Absolutely shit face. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, we'll be coming back. Fine. Yeah, definitely. Cause, because I, one thing I asked when I was on the, the footnotes with you is that mm. because what made it so good was the naivety and, and yeah. the natural thing, the, but when you get make a success, then is he... In the later stuff that you read, is he forcing it? Is he kept it? Is he is he does he try? Is he trying to make it more? Because hmm. I remember we know the one with the book, the special one. The act, yeah, yeah, there yeah. was actually a plot twist, and yeah. there was actually the fact that book four linked kind up with of book one. Yeah, it yeah, was yeah. kind of like oh my kind god, of. kind of yeah. yeah. I remember you, I think you, yeah, you text me to be like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, shit. I was like sitting with Chloe in the car, and, and, and I was like listening to it, and I was like, are you sick? It actually, I was like, might make sense. Yeah. Fuck? Um, do you know what his? I, it's a hard one because I don't know exactly when he wrote them. So I think he, I think he wrote them quite early on because there's still, there's still that naivety to them. But you can definitely sense that he's become more confident with his writing, which Fine. I actually quite, I think it's quite interesting. Yeah, because it's now less about oh he's just like right you know writing them just because he, he he doesn't know anyone's listening. It's more now. I'm quite interested in what he thinks people like because it's not what he thinks. <laughs> Fine. Because he'll be backstage sometimes at a show or whatever and we'll come off at the interval and he'll be like, great, great, great show, guys. Um, I just don't know why they were laughing at this bit, this bit, that bit and that. And I'm like, I love oh, that you really? don't know that. He still I love it. that. You did tell me, I've heard that before. Yeah, and, that, and, and he said... still is like that. And I think because he doesn't really... <laughs> Engage in society much. Right, really. that's because it he does kind seem of like is in his own outside. world, really. And and he had this mad plan for these books, and he's just writing his books. And I don't think he re- like he doesn't really care about what we do with the show. Is, is anyone actually buying the ones off Amazon? Because that's where the yeah, books yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah. Do you know yeah. how many he's actually sold of books? Um, I actually don't. Thousands though. Oh really? It's pretty good. I remember actually when we did, when we did our our book, I was kind of mocking my dad's. Uh, Amazon sales with our um, publisher, and she was like, that, "No, that's actually quite good yeah, for because, like an Amazon like ebook." Yeah, that's because people forget. Decent. Yeah, yeah, people forget that it, everyone thinks unless you hear like bestsellers or hundreds of thousands or millions yeah, of copies, yeah, yeah. you think your books are failure. But you know, twenty thousand, ten thousand. Yeah, I think yeah, it's like, like exactly. seven thousand is a bestseller or something. Like, yeah, something yeah, exactly. Like, and you know, no one reads books anymore. So no, well, actually, I mean, apart from yours, which is a fantastic book. Yeah, what a flank. That's the whole reason we're actually we're actually here. <laughs> I've got two last questions for you. Yes, what, mate. Who is your favourite character out of the out oh, of the, the, the books? Good question. Oh, I mean, I don't really like any of them, but um, because in my formative days when I was younger, I quite like the um. You know who's in the uh, you know not I mean Belinda I, I reckon it'd be quite fun to have a go on Belinda I, yeah. I, I visualize in my head like, it's like when I was younger I used to actually d- have a little dalliance with a, an older woman who I think was oh, really? like uh, almost in my head when I think of Belinda is her but Belinda's got um, black hair but this woman yeah. had blonde hair and I was twenty one she was she said she was thirty five she was definitely forty two right but but Belinda's not Belinda's only like. 29. I know, she says she, but in my mind, she's okay, a lot fine, older. Fine. The way well, she talks about, and, you know. Yeah, and she they... also, I always think of Nigella Lawson. Yes, yes. That kind of, because yeah. I think that's like, that's I, like dad. Yeah, part, I think it? she's like lust, like, the way I have her is if you looked at an old page three calendar or like an yeah, older yeah. kind of <laughs> yeah. thing, voluptuous, like 80 style. Yeah, birth. exactly. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty much exactly. Uh, yeah, you've but but oh, she's older. You've visited no my way. dad's mind. It, when you said her age, she doesn't. The way she operates, well, the way they he... talk and go for wine. You know, when they go down to the hotel the, and, and they go <laughs> yeah, to spa well, days. Twenty-nine year olds go to I the mean, Ritz. The wine bar. But it's because he's a sixty-year-old man and he doesn't change the way he writes for any of no. the characters. He doesn't think. How would a twenty-year-old uh, do something? Um, I quite like Bella. Yeah, just because she's a Bella, complete so, but, yeah. train wreck. So 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 I reckon when I was younger. Me and my mate, we would have tried it on with Belinda and, um, and but you would and have Bella. you would have got Bella. Yeah, I guess hundred yeah, percent. You know what I mean? But you, like, but I quite like her as a character. She's just an absolute sloppy mess. Yeah, like, she you is. Know. She's an yeah. But I quite like. I think, you know, I think 
for me, she's a bit more fitter than than Belinda. I, the way I oh, painted, think? I think so. I paint in my mind, even because they're both that one where they get the the, the fitting. Yeah, the fitting yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I love how it's called. I didn't understand <laughs> it because you know a horse has got a bit in its mouth. Yeah, yeah. When I read the fitting bit, I was like. No, it's just a bit where they're getting fitted up. It was that, right. that, that's how he or dad had written the oh chapter. Yeah, it's, yeah, you're right. It's, it's called, called the fitting, the fitting bit. bit. Yeah, I mean, you're it right. doesn't, and I thought, oh, it's horse riding reference. It's like, no, oh, no. your dad's just fucking run out of name for a title and gone, <laughs> oh, it's the fitting this bit. This is the bit where they get fitted the, with yeah. their costumes. When they're all the riding gear on, I was like, yeah. for your dad, that meant that's like the, the height of like fashion and de rigueur. Yeah, and also that kind of Jilly Cooper that's world the, of yes. like, Old, but older Jilly Cooper yeah, yeah, birds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm thinking Old. of. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking she's in my mind. Belinda is 38, 40. They're both right there. Uh, Bella's like a younger, Bella's the muckier, younger kind, of kind of 32, 33, aspiring old. to be like Belinda. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then just like I always think Giselle sounds like the hottest one. Yes, but maybe uh, it's just because yeah. she's called Giselle. I don't know. Y- yes, it's a bit. Of, yeah, I mean, it's one what, from false will she be Crystal of Destiny? She might as well be. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean, it's not far off that. Yeah. Um, she, yeah, but I mean, favourite, maybe like Bella. Fine. I, I, mean, t- I don't know. Well, um, who's yours? I, I, well, I thought Bella. I, yeah, that yeah. was mine. Oh, I, uh, yeah, I, I yeah. just... Um, and my, and my, actually, my, my favourite footnotes was the, the American guy when he, he, he basically conjures up the perfect... I can't remember what his name is, where he's like, Blinder on the cobble. She's like, all right, Blinder! Oh, Thomas Middleditch. Tom yeah, he's Middleditch. so funny. Yeah. It was the, the most genius one. Anyone who, who, who needs to go back and listen to any of the footnotes or should we listen to my dad report? Uh, Thomas Middleditch. Yeah. Yeah. He just summed he it up. He like, changed the way I... I think that's where I got Bella's voice yes. from. Yeah. I think that because he was so funny yeah. doing that, I was like, oh, I should do voices. He's like stuff. getting drunk. He's like fucking your ankles up in the car. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> like, sort of a little pot belly, like badly fake tan. Sort of like you'd see on a night, you know, yeah. like on New Year's Eve or after Christmas. Right. And they show right, right. photos of like what happened in Newcastle or like Manchester yeah, sure, in the street. Right, with like, okay, yeah. With badly dressed women with darbs and pot bellies being sick on themselves, laying on roundabouts. All right, James. Fucking hell. Lovely ladies having a good time. <laughs> Fine, love you. <laughs> okay, and obviously the, I got the Daily Mail app. I don't like right. the Daily Mail at all, but they run those like, stories. The world's going yeah, down yeah. to you know, um, what is it they they blame everything on? Immigrants and the world's oh, going yeah. down the toilet. But also look at the the, the you know when, with the last days of Rome, like everyone yeah, yeah, falling yeah, yeah, apart, yeah. and then you see like New Year's Eve and everyone's like, upside down around yeah, about yeah, yeah. people and having sex like in an alley. Carnage. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's th- what th- I imagine. These whole books are basically that. Yeah, yeah. that's what I thought it yeah. would be. Um, <laughs> is there any book but in the in the last question in the books that you look that you've just read and gone like your worst bit that it just makes you go mm. fucking hell, Dad? Yeah, there was a bit. Um. um <laughs> <laughs> there was like a rimming bit ah! that I re- that's honestly still is that when they put the flute up the arse is that the bit oh god there's that as well any any arse stuff actually really yeah but there was do you know what it was I remember this I remember this I get so excited because it was like <laughs> so vanilla right it was like yeah. it was like doesn't understand how to use boobs doesn't really know how to use the fanny doesn't use the anything but then suddenly, out of like book three, just went into like ain't like in, into yeah. anal, like rimming it was like what? rimming like literally yeah, blowing smoke up someone's arse yes. like and that I always find. It was like your dad, but when I read it, oh, I was like, this is what your dad had done. He'd gone like this. He'd gone, oh, I'm, I just don't. Porn. <laughs> yeah. uh, like, here's the story. Or he just got like, bored of how many ways that you can say, like, <laughs> yeah. vagina. Yeah. But and he, he was like, what else can you put things in? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know. <laughs> yeah. Turn around. But I don't think he did know. I think no, he had well, to, yeah, I think exactly. he Googled it and yeah. found it because I think he must have gone to, like, Pornhub maybe or somewhere and just yeah. gone, Thanks. oh, they're doing yeah. that. Great. They're yeah. doing that now. Uh, uh, they're doing that, that now. Yeah. Except they're not. No one's doing that. Are you not? <laughs> so amateur. You I'm not playing smoke smoke asses. No. <laughs> well, no, but there is a weird subsection of people who are into the whole cigars and cigarettes up bits. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Very odd. I know. That. Well, that's the other weird thing about the show is that people come and t- tell us yeah. all their most intimate kinks and you're like, excellent. <laughs> Lovely. Which is great, you know, if you're open to share. So cool. where can people find out all about My Dad Wrote a Porno and, and obviously follow your dear self? Um, yeah, um... Just search my dad wrote a porno on Google. You'll find all. I mean, it's the only book I'm about. terrible at this sort of stuff. I, I, yeah, because all of our handles are weird. On in, yeah, our Instagrams like my my dad wrote a, our Twitter's dad wrote a porno. Yeah, um, could you so, really synced you up know. the brand there? No, well it's because Instagram doesn't let you have the word porno. It's ridiculous. It does not. No. Unbelievable. Um, and what about you personally? Or your, your um, own... I'm Uncle Igor on everything. Why Uncle Igor? It's, <laughs> it's what my, it is. 
it's what my sisters used to call me when we were kids because I was the only boy and they used to bully me. And, oh. and then I'd be really annoyed. I feel like we should do another podcast it's, with just that alone. Yeah. Your whole demeanour changed. And like I just saw something happen it. behind your eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, they'd all be, they'd I'll all be show like, them. I'm now world famous. <laughs> yeah. I'll buy them presents. I matter yeah. too, you know, yeah, yeah. guys. Um, no. And they and then, you know, they'd be all like, mm, just being annoying as right. kids yeah, are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I'd get a bit annoyed yeah. and then they'd call me uncle igor because i'd be a fucking grump right and so then that kind of became a name in the in my family because you look like an then... eagle like you know <laughs> well, maybe master, that as well come in. Yeah. 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 i've written another porno yeah, yeah. <laughs> um yeah so it's just uncle igor with an e fine not even with an i okay well listen jamie you've been fantastic thanks um, for having I, me it's we, been really fun i really enjoyed it um and thank you again for having me on, on your podcast You're guys my, genuinely my dad wrote a porno is my favourite podcast of all time. I think if you want to hear storytelling at its best, um, then buy my book, What a Flanker. Then if you want to see something, how it's like done <laughs> s- s- kind of okay, then check out My Dad Wrote a Porno. Uh, I'm in James Haskell. Jamie, you're a legend. Thanks, mate. You too. Thank you. Fun. And if you like this podcast, please share, please subscribe and, and leave a review, good or bad. I won't read them, but it's just nice to have, you know, five stars. I will. 